Hey there, it's Victoria McCooey. If you're married to a narcissist, then chances are your self-esteem has been diminished. It's just what they do, and we're gonna talk about why they do this. But first, let's talk about how they do this. It's, it's not something that happens overnight, and it's really hard to tell that it's happening at first because it's like a slow drip. Just little things they'll say to you that wear down your self-esteem. Um, they'll give you a compliment the first time you're together or in the beginning, and then never quite give you the same level of compliment again. All the future compliments will sort of be backhanded. Um, you know, so the first one will be like, oh my God, you look so beautiful tonight. Now, you're eager for that next compliment, right? And it never comes because the next one will, go, will be something like, you know, you look really good for your age. Or um, that, that dress really um, makes you look like um, you've lost, as if you lost weight, even though you really haven't. You know, it'll always be something less than a full compliment so that you're always wanting more. And this just in itself, without you realizing it, is lowering your self-esteem. Um, and then the really big stuff comes, you know, later when you're already compromised, then the big things will, will come, start happening like, you know, you're, no one likes you, or you're stupid, or you can't understand that, or uh, no one ever believes anything you say, or I don't know, you, there are a million, there are a million. I mean, I've been on the receiving end of them from my, my first marriage to a narcissist. And uh, I know that the people in my community tell me every day, these, these jabs that they get, these verbal jabs, this is verbal abuse um, because it wears down your self-esteem it's emotional abuse, it's psychological abuse, it's verbal abuse, all, all, uh, all shaken up together in this wicked cocktail that you are drinking every single day because that's what the narcissist is serving up to you. And you are going to become a shell of a person. This is how, why they do it, how they do it, but so what makes a person want to do this to another person? Well, when your self-esteem is diminished, you become unsure of yourself. You become off balance. Um, you become tentative in your decision-making. You, you, um, you're weak. You're in a weakened state. And that's exactly where they want you because now it's easier for them to control you because you're you're about to you're you're on the verge of caving anyway because you're not sure of your decision making or your intelligence or your fortitude or your parenting ability or anything because they've diminished that in your mind so it's easy for them to convince you that they know best and they're going to take control because that's the goal. That's the goal is to control everything about you so they can do and have whatever they want in this relationship, in this marriage, in this family. They can control the money. They can do what they want. They can make all the decisions. Uh, they can use all of their power to, to guide things the way they want without any regard for what's best for you, best for your children, best for the family at whole, it doesn't matter to them. The only thing that matters to them is what's best for them. They need immediate gratification. You know, if they want to buy an expensive piece of clothing or an expensive car or take an expensive trip, that's all that matters. That's what they want. So they feel entitled and they have this grandiose, idea of who they are that's inflated and unrealistic, they don't want anyone, especially you, who actually is in a position to, to veto 
whatever it is they want. They don't want you thinking you can do that. They want to be able to get what they want to feed their ego whenever they want it. They want to go on an expensive ski trip, sailing trip, crazy vacation. Yes, of course. Yeah, they should have that in their mind. They should have that. Oh, so what if the kids um, would be better off at a private school? Or so what if the kids need diapers? Or I mean, at every level, at every socioeconomic level, this is going on. So it could be that the kids don't have formula or diapers or whatever basic needs, but if they want something, they want to be able to get it. So this is why they do what they do, so that you are completely off balance, weakened, unable to have a voice in this relationship so that they can make all the decisions and they're all going to be what feeds their ego. This sounds pretty hopeless, right? Are you, are you nodding and saying, yes, this is exactly what's going on in my marriage? If that's you and you're saying, great, you, you got it. You, you hit the nail on the head. Now what? Tell me, what do I do? I'm in this terrible position. I'm compromised. I'm weakened. I have no control. I have no say. I have no voice. Tell me what to do. Okay, here it is. The very first thing you have to do is to reclaim your power. You have to take back your, your voice, your power that you've given away. And yeah, you have to take some responsibility for it or you won't be able to heal. You can't just be a victim and say, well, he did this to me. Because if you're just a victim, then there's nothing you can do about it. But once you take responsibility and say, I allowed this, I was a partner in this, getting this dynamic to the place where it is, once you can take that ownership, then you can start to reclaim the power. Because you know that you helped create that, so you can create something new too. And that's where my program comes in. It's called Reclaim Your Power. It's a proprietary system that I've developed over years with hundreds of, of women who are married to narcissistic men. I have helped them through this process to reclaim the power that they allowed to be taken away from them so that they can have a voice, so that they can draw the line in the sand, create boundaries, and make sure that they guard those boundaries. Now, how the narcissist reacts to this is out of our control, but we can set these boundaries and we can demand that our voice be heard. Once that happens, now it's time to make some really tough choices but you get to decide. You get to say what's best for you and your family. And you get to make those decisions from a place of power and not from a place of fear or weakness. So how does that sound? Does that sound like something you want to know more about? Because I am eager to help as many women as I can to get out of the situation that you're in because I was there and I felt very alone. I thought no one in the world had ever been in the place where I was. I didn't think anyone would understand. I thought I was embarrassed. I was humiliated that my own husband was treating me this way behind closed doors because to the outside world, he was a, the adoring husband. He spoke so highly of me. He had me on a pedestal, they thought. But the second no one was looking, I was abused on so many levels. I didn't think anyone would believe me. So I know what this is like. I know what you're feeling. I know you, you think it's hopeless, but it's not because I figured it out. It was long and it was hard. And that's why I am determined to make it not as long and not as hard for you. So we can all learn from each other's mistakes. Like I said, I've talked to now hundreds of women, I've coached almost that many to get them out of this toxic situation. So I've been able to compile all the best practices, all the things that worked best for all of us and make it into a system that you can use to develop your own, your own self-esteem back up. 
build your own self-esteem back up, regain your confidence, have a voice, be strong, uh, and reclaim your power. And take charge of making these decisions for you and your, your, your family, your kids. All right. Uh, there will be a link um, in this video, in the notes, where you can call the first step to find out more about working with me is to set up a free call. I always offer the first strategy call free. That way I can find out exactly what's going on in your situation and I will tell you in all honesty and transparency whether I'm the right person to help you, whether I have the tools that fit your situation. I don't want to tell you to work with me if you're not someone I can help because it won't help you and it'll just make me feel bad about myself. I want to find the person who's the right fit for me and for you so that we can work together to get you back in control of your life. So sign up on my calendar. Um, you can go to my website, victoriamakui.com, click on free session and schedule it there or um, the link in, this, in the notes will be straight to my calendar. So you can just sign up at a time that's convenient for you. And if we're a good fit, and I know I can help you, then we'll talk about the different ways I can work with you. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.